What's up kitchen crew? Kate here from Cook with Kate and today we're gonna answer one of the most popular questions I always get asked during my live streams on Twitch TV which is how do you choose a chef's knife? So we're gonna go through my knife kit today, go over a couple different styles of knives and I will be teaching you what to look for when you're gonna go out and buy your own knife for yourself. So stay tuned, we're gonna get into it. Let's go. So this is my original knife kit that I got when I went to culinary school. I graduated from that in 2012. So this is almost 10 years old now. You can see it's got a little wear and tear on it. But Still keeping everything safe nonetheless and it is a Hankel's brand knife kit not full leather though that's the only thing let's open this up see what we got So just looking at this here, I have a couple additions in here since culinary school, but most of these I've had since 2010. So original chef's knife right here. And this is also why I'm showing you this video today is because I made a mistake buying this. It's super uncomfortable to use, even though it's a super nice blade. So let's not make that mistake and learn how to choose a proper chef's knife for ourselves. I'm gonna take this one out for now so we can compare it to my favorite chef's knife. And then starting on this side, so we have a couple different types of paring knives, a zester up here, which was part of the kit that we needed. This has been added. This is a prosciutto sort of slicing knife, which is why the blade is so thin and long. Uh, this knife right here is something I picked up when I lived on Vancouver Island and I was doing some fishing and processing fish for our friends. Is This is a Bubba blade. Absolutely amazing knife. Perfect for filleting. You can see all the different angles and grips that it has. Never gets slippery because of the rubber style. And then it also comes with this really nice sheath. I will be honest, this is probably the knife I'm scared of most, just because of how sharp it is. So we always keep that in the sheath. This one right here, if I take that off, this is a boning knife. This is Victorinox, so you can see how much wear and tear this has got on it over the almost last 10 years. but. Nothing wrong with the blade, and I really, really like this one because it's flexible. So you can see how I flex this. Awesome for cleaning different meats and different butchery. Can also be used with fish. That's part of the original kit that I got. Coming back over, we have just a serrated knife from Victorinox as well. Nothing fancy about it. Very, very popular knife that most chefs have. And I'm going to leave all the links to these knives down below in the description so you can use our Amazon affiliate link if you so desire. Pick one up for yourself. This right here, one of our favorite and most important pieces in the kit is a honing steel. So I did originally get a Hankel's honing steel to go with my Hankel's chef's knife. And just going by the shape of it and style, this is a diamond honing seal. So there's a couple different styles. Look them up, make sure you get the right one for your blades. I've never had any issues with this. Next really, really big knife over here. This is called a scimitar. And this is also used for butchery. Take the big, big sheath off of this, careful. And brand, don't know if it'll zoom in for us, is also Victorinox. You saw the little angle there. So this knife has zero flex to it and it's used mostly for butchering large pieces of meat. So super important if you're into butchery. 
buying whole animal cuts and breaking them down that way. And then this knife. This was a gift. It is a very, very special Japanese knife that was handmade by somebody. As you can see, I've not used it in a bit. And one thing about this knife is it's a blue steel. So if you don't keep it dry or wipe it off ASAP when you're using it, it will rust. It cleans really easily though. This must have just been from moving or something like that, but this is actually a knife used to slice vegetables. Really beautiful, I picked it up from Knifeware. And then lastly, because my proper chef's knife doesn't even fit in here anymore, because I'm always using it. This is the Shun Premier Santoku that I have used for many, many years in and out of restaurants. A lot of cooking at home with it and she is a beaut so we'll get into what we're gonna look for when we choose our chef's knife because we can clearly see already just between these two blades how different they are the handle the blade the thickness of them etc right so let's clear this out and then we'll talk about chef's knife so now that we've gone over the many different types of knives that are available to buy, it's time to go over what exactly to look for when you're in the store or online looking for that special something to upgrade your kitchen. So right off the bat, we'll talk about this one. This is pretty expensive. I believe I didn't look this up yet ahead of time. I guess I can right now. Yeah, so $237 online is that knife. And then I don't think I paid more than $150 for this Hankel's blade. But let's talk about price right off the bat. So it's not all about price when you're choosing knives. Expensive doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna be the better option. I know this, I have many different types or brands of knives, let's say, that all range in price. Some are only $30, and then like I said, this one is $230. But if this is gonna be the knife that I mostly use all of the time, I think it is worth investing in this one particular knife, a chef's knife, if you do a lot of cooking. And then the rest of my, let's say, supplemental knives like the butchery ones are much less expensive because i'm not using them all the time so first thing we know that don't have to look for a price point expensive doesn't mean better honestly the most important thing i would say when choosing a knife for yourself especially a chef's knife if you're going to be using it a lot is how does it feel in your hand so do we have to go over how to properly hold a knife? Maybe. Let's do that. How to properly hold a knife. We're gonna take this, bring it up, and we're gonna snug this part right against our knuckle here. We're gonna wrap our finger around there, put our thumb there. Turn it this way, wrap the rest of your hands around. That's how you properly hold a chef's knife. You can determine as well where to snug up your index finger. I usually go pretty snug up to the blade and that way we have lots and lots of balance and strength when we are cutting stuff. There's, I don't wanna see this, none of this finger on top. Look at how much more tippy this is. Many more things are gonna go wrong. So always keep your finger there much more power and strength that way. So if we're gonna take our knife and hold it properly. You can see how this totally just hugs the shape of my hand even. There's not really any pockets underneath there. It feels very, very comfortable. So you can tell already that it's very, very different shape. And even the blade itself, right? Like this is much more thick here, which I think is what is keeping on digging into my hand. So most chefs have this callus right here on their index finger, I'm left-handed. So it's on my left index finger and that's where your knife always sits when you hold it. 
So one thing I found with this blade is because of the angle, let's see, and how sharp it is right here, it always used to dig into my hand. Like this is actually sharp. It used to dig into my callus and literally tear that off. And it was so, so painful I could barely even cut. So I said to heck with this blade. Got through culinary school with it and then decided to level up. So if we look at it the same way, right? So pop your index finger there with your callus and then try and wrap around all of this metal. It's right here and is stopping it from actually being comfortable. And then as well, you could see where it digs into my finger right there, because that's how I typically hold. And then same with the the width is my index finger doesn't can't really sneak up the same way. So I always find that it's sneaking down the side of the blade, which is super dangerous. Even though this knife was expensive way back when, doesn't mean that it was proper or what I should have been buying for myself. So yeah, sad to say, this is probably my least favorite knife. Nothing against Henkel's at all, just does not work for my hand shape. So now that we've talked about handles and what to look for, let's talk about the different types of knife blades between the brands. Because there is a definite difference, we can even see right off the bat. One big difference here is our Henkel's knives are made in Germany and our shuns are made in Japan. They do both have a different type of steel, so we'll go over that in a second here, as well as different Rockwell hardnesses. The factory edge on the Henkel is a 15 degree double bevel, whereas the factory edge on the Shen is a 16 degree double bevel. It's very obvious to, to tell that the Henkel has a plastic handle on the knife, whereas the Shun has a full wooden handle on the knife. So the steel that they use for the German knife is known for its durability, but that doesn't mean that it's gonna keep its edge longer. So that is also one thing to remember. Just because the steel is durable, which means that you should never really get chips in it or anything like that, doesn't mean that you're gonna have to maintain it less. If anything, you'll be maintaining this blade more than the Shun. So this VG Max steel that they use on the Shun is known both for its durability and strength. And I will be honest, I have chipped this blade once before. I believe it was cutting carrots. So yeah, be careful, right? The blade is still brittle and sometimes those things happen. Got it redone though, and honestly, I don't even notice that I'm missing that little bit of blade that we had to take off of it. And just going off of the Rockwell hardness scale, so the Shun Classic, this is a premiere, but the Classic, which is less expensive than this, has a much higher Rockwell hardness than the Zwilling Professional from Hankel. The Shun has a 61 rating, whereas the Hankel only has a 57. And that goes by how hard the steel is. And so even though the Henkels come out of the factory with a sharper edge than the Shun, the Shun's going to be able to retain its edge much longer. And so practical use of the knife will feel like a much sharper blade over a long period of time. And then one of the last things we can talk about is just the different shape of our knife blades that we have here. So this is a Western design, which is very, very common being used in North American households, whereas it's very easy to see that the Shun is a Japanese knife style design known as a Santoku. We also talked about the different thicknesses of the blade. So one reason why I really disliked this Henkel blade is during vegetable prep. Because of the thickness of this knife, especially at the heel, I always found that it would like split the veggies apart. Very unclean way compared to slicing right through in a very satisfying way that the shun, just the thinness of the blade, you can be much, much more precise. For a busy family kitchen where multiple people might be using the knife, I'd recommend a Hankel's. Remember, it's got durability, but it maybe won't keep its edge for as long. So make sure you pick up a proper steel for that. And if sharpness is what you're going for, 
definitely pick up a shun. I don't let many people use this knife just because, well, if they mess it up, it'll be a bit expensive to fix it in the end. All right, kitchen crew, that's it for the video today. Hopefully I shared enough of tips and tricks of what to look for when you are going out to buy your very own chef's knife get something quality. One thing I always say when people ask, hey, what do you think of this? Well, if you want cheap, probably not gonna last. And if you want it to last, it's not gonna be cheap. A chef's knife should be an investment for you, especially if you do a lot of cooking. I use a lot of different brands of knives, as you guys could see when we went through my kit at the beginning of the video. And like I said, the most important thing, it should be comfortable in your hand. If it's not, I feel like it just takes away from the enjoyment of cooking. You can't really enjoy what you're doing if you're currently in pain while doing it. <laughs> so go into the store, hold a bunch of knives, talk to the people in there, ask them about the different blades if you're unsure, or just go back and watch our video. If you want to see any other videos of the different styles of knives and what to look for, for example, the butchery knives that we saw in my knife kit, let me know in the comments below and we'll get that one done. Other than that, friendos, thanks so much for all the support online. Make sure you subscribe, give this vid a like if you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.